Hello and welcome again to the parish of St. Anne. My name is Don Paris and I serve as the parish priest here. Uh, it's a delight to be able to have you join us for another video on Anglicanism and sort of some of the symbolism and the things that we encounter in our tradition. In some of our earlier videos, we talked about liturgy. We talked about uh, some of the items that we see in the church. We talked about sacraments. What I thought for the next few videos is to focus in on some of the particular sacraments that we experience within the life of the church. And today I'd like to focus in on one of the first sacraments, and that is baptism, a sacrament by which one is washed with water. So a word here before I begin. In the Anglican church, as I mentioned in our video on sacraments, we do have seven sacraments. However, we believe that two of those sacraments are sacraments of our Lord. And what we mean by that is those sacraments are sacraments that Jesus himself instituted in the scriptures. So Anglicans will say that there are two sacraments that are explicitly commissioned by Jesus for the church. And then the other five sacraments are sacraments that are good, but they're not absolutely essential in the life of every Christian. But for the church, we believe that the sacrament of baptism is the entry point into the life of the church. It's an entry point into which we enter into the body of Christ and to share in his new life and new grace. Now you notice that I'm standing here in our baptistry, which is actually located in somewhat of an unusual place, although you see this a lot in Anglican churches. I say unusual because in the early church, the Baptist baptistry, which is what we call where the baptismal font is, the baptistry was more often located either in the back of the church at the main entrance or in a building off to the side. And the reason for that is, as I said a moment, a couple moments ago, is it's through baptism that we enter into the living body of Jesus Christ in which we enter into the life of the church. And in the early church, baptistries were often quite large to the point in which one could step down in and be fully immersed into water while the priest, bishop, or deacon would say the words, I baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Over time, however, uh, the baptistry slowly made its way into the church more often and off to the side, as it is here at St. Anne's. And that was largely, I would say, because Christianity became the more predominant religion uh, in society and culture. It lost its sense of being an entry point, and more often than not, people were baptized as infants. Now, the church still will baptize infants, but we also baptize adults. Anybody of any age can be baptized. And baptism is the sacrament not only by which we believe we are cleansed of our sins, so it's a cleansing sacrament, but it's also one in which we are incorporated into a new life, into the new life of Jesus, into the life of the church. Now, I said in our video on sacraments that sacraments use very natural signs and symbols and wonders to help us experience tangibly the grace of God working in our lives. And baptism does, so through, does that through two different ways. Of course, the one that we always see is through water. And if you think about water, water actually conveys in a real sense that sense of cleansing, of purification. So I don't know about you, but I love taking baths. I like taking showers. Because after I'm done, I always feel so incredibly clean. And so in a sense, one could say that baptism does the same thing, but it, it's Cleaning, in a sense, for lack of better words, is a purification of the body and the soul, a deep transformation of us. So whenever you're, one is baptized, and we're only baptized once, when one's, one is baptized, it's believed that one is not only forgiven of all one's sins, but drawn deeply into the life of the church. In the early church, baptism was quite intense, and you still see this sometimes in Eastern Christianity, in the Christian Orthodox churches, uh, the priest will often dip the person into the water and hold them there 
until they began to struggle a little bit because the idea was is that they were dying to their old, old selves, to their old life. And so they experienced that real death by having to struggle a bit and then the priest would pull them up. Now, of course, it's probably not a terribly popular thing to do. I think a lot of mothers would not be happy with me if I held their baby underwater for a while. And some adults might not like that either. But the ideal being in it, it's noble in a sense, was that we are dying to our old selves and being born again into Christ. This is all very scriptural. We hear a lot about this through the letters of St. Paul. As I mentioned in the beginning, not only is that cleansing, but it's also entering into the life of the church. In the early church, uh, one would not actually come into the full body of the church until one was baptized in the waters of the baptismal font. Instead, they would stand in a place, a rather larger um, atrium on the outside of the church or in an area between the courtyard and the main body of the church where they would stand there and they would listen to the scriptures proclaimed on Sundays and they would listen to the sermon but after the sermon the bishop would dismiss them or the priest would dismiss them to go study with other teachers to learn more about the faith and then at the great Easter vigil the, the night when we proclaim that Christ is risen from the dead they would come before the bishop and the bishop would baptize them and they would now be invited to come into the body of the church and to share in the Eucharist. So for the church and its theology, we see baptism as not only incorporating and cleansing of us, but drawing us more deeply into the life of the church. In the Anglican church, we do something very much like what the Orthodox do, is that as soon as you're baptized, you can receive Holy Eucharist. So even a baby at that point can receive the body and blood of Christ, because they are now a member of Christ's body. That's what's going on with us. And so often you will see or hear us say that all Christians are welcome to receive a full Eucharist because we believe everybody who's been baptized in the font are now a part of Christ's holy church, whether they're Anglican, Catholic, Orthodox, Lutheran, Presbyterian, whatever they may be, the waters of baptism unite us into Christ's body. In our next video, I'm going to talk a little bit about Eucharist. So again, baptism and Eucharist are what we believe are the sacraments instituted by Jesus himself. And we say that because we hear Jesus speak very openly about it, about the two sacraments in the Gospels. Uh, in fact, Matthew's Gospel concludes with Jesus commanding us to go therefore and baptize all peoples in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. So this is why we as a church continue to do that. I might just close with one final word. Baptism, interesting enough, is not a uniquely Christian experience. In fact, there's evidence that uh, a ritual, a cleansing ritual, was quite common in certain sects of Judaism at the time of Jesus and even in a couple of centuries before Jesus. So our celebration of our baptism actually has some deep Jewish roots. And so this is why we believe John the Baptist was along the River Jordan uh, cleansing people and washing them through the waters of the Jordan. It was actually probably a Jewish ritual that Christians then reinterpreted and used, or perhaps taken on a different meaning to explain what's going on here. So again, baptism, what you want to remember is it's not only a cleansing and purifying and ourselves dying to our old life and being born into the new life. It's also our incorporation into the body of Christ, our becoming members of Jesus Christ and his holy body, the church. My friends, next in our next video, I'll talk about Eucharist. We'll release that in another week or so. But I want to say, as always, you are welcome here at St. Anne's. You're welcome to join us for our Sunday celebrations at 1030 a.m. on Sundays. You're welcome to join us on throughout the week. We have morning prayer on uh, Tuesday through Friday at 9.30 a.m. We have uh, Thursday night Eucharist at 5 th uh, 5.30, so 9.30 and 5.30. Uh, we have lots of events, lots of amazing activities going on. Uh, you are always welcome here at the church. And if there's anything you need, please know 
you can reach out to us and we'll be here for you. My friends, may God bless you, may God keep you, and may God let his face shine upon you. Take care and God bless.